Every generation has their opinion on what the best year for music was. Boomers, 1967. The Cooler Boomers, 1976. Gen X, 1994. Zoomers, 2016, maybe. As a millennial, I'm here to tell you, 2009 was the best year for music. That is the correct answer. Especially if you were following what was the most interesting genre of the times, indie music. For research for this video, I was going through best of lists, both personal and more widespread, and man, 2009 did not miss. This was the year of the XX, Meriwether Post Pavilion, Vekinemast, Bitte Orca, The Beginning of Major Lazer, A Freak Out Album from the Flaming Lips, Peak Bat for Lashes, Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix, Catacombs, It's Blitz, Fever Ray, Girls, The Very Best, Actor, Japan Droids, A Whole New Sound, called Chill Wave, Atlas Sound, Pains of Being Pure at Heart, The Blood Bank EP, The Big Pink, The Antlers, Passion Pit, The Smith Westerns. So yeah, I, I had a difficult time narrowing down this video to not be like seven hours long, but I did it. And so, here are just a few of the very best indie songs of 2009, though you likely can expect a part two in the near future. Here we go. Phenomenal song, phenomenal album. These guys were in peak form on all of Meriwether Post Pavilion. In my opinion, their best album. This one was the breakout though, an upbeat psych dance track all about, oddly enough, it's about the desire to provide for your wife and daughter. An odd topic for a song that sounds like this, but it's Animal Collective, so not that weird, really. Also, check out What Would I Want Sky, which everybody loved in 2009, but nobody's talking about in 2020, which is just criminal. I don't think Dirty Projectors have ever topped Bitte Orca, so make sure you check it out. Or revisit it, if you already know about it. It's the pinnacle of however you want to characterize this band's sound. A mixture of weirdo funk, or proggy pop, or melodic art rock. You just know it when you hear it. They're one of those bands. Distinct, but hard to pin down in words. Anyway, the song kicks ass. Amber Kaufman's vocals are a tour de force. Its Blitz was a turning point for the IAS when the New York trio took their artsy post-punk tendencies and Carano's lyrical and onstage eccentricities to the dance floor. And the song that captures that moment best, and honestly has had the most staying power, is Heads Will Roll. Not my favorite era of this band, but damn it if there weren't some legit jams. This French group was always going to make it big, even with their outside-the-box approach to song structure and academically-minded lyrics. Wolfgang Amadeus Phoenix was the breakthrough, and boy howdy, what a spectacular moment. I'll never forget seeing this band play ACL 2009, and you could just tell they were in awe of how large of a crowd had come to see them. This is the biggest crowd we've ever played for, thank you so much. We have to come to Texas to see this. Uh, I don't know what to say. Thank you guys. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you! This track is my favorite, but don't sleep on Listomania, obviously. And now we've come to arguably my favorite part of the video, the chill wave part. These guys are the big three of the chill wave movement, a trend in music that lasted about 18 months and has been unjustly maligned since its demise for being overhyped by the internet and more critically than commercially adored. That's ridiculous to me. I love chill wave. It defines this era more than any other sound. It was perfect for the times, a synth heavy, dance heavy, psych influenced take on underground 80s DIY music, tape hiss included, it was a cathartic response to the Great Recession, fresh and nostalgic and melancholy all at once. There were plenty of great chill wave groups that came and went during this time, but these three are where you want to get started. Washed Out, 
whose Fill It All Around became the theme song to Portlandia, Toro y Moi, who evolved from the Chill Wave label to make fascinating new funk jams, and Neon Indian, the most infrequent of the three to put out new music, but by far my favorite. His song Deadbeat Summer was basically my theme song for the summer of 2009. Whatever happened to these guys? The British press were hailing them as the next big thing, and us Yankees over here across the pond were giving them props too, and rightly so, that first album is excellent. But after that, the Big Pink fell off pretty quick. Whatever, this song is timeless, as is Velvet, so check that one out too. They may be a footnote, but they're a pretty damn good one. Maybe the most divisive new figure in indie rock in 2009 was Nathan Williams and his band Waves, who either made a new exciting lo-fi take on surf punk, or a completely derivative and talentless version of a trendy sound, depending on who you ask. Waves would go on to prove the haters wrong in 2010, but count me among the faithful when he was kind of a pariah among the hipster crowd. Songs like So Bored proved that Nathan was capable of writing huge rock hooks, even if he didn't have the recording and mixing part down just yet. On the other side of that coin came a Canadian duo who made brash, loud, cathartic, life-affirming, shout-along magic. Japan Droids were an instant hit, and it's simply because their debut album kicks so much ass, my face is melting right now just talking about them. This song is probably the one people remember the most, but don't sleep on Sovereignty, Wet Hair, and The Boys Are Leaving Town. There are so many bands that have tried this Springsteen punk style, but no one did it like Japan Droids. Speaking of duos that make more noise than should be humanly possible, this was the year we said hello to Sleigh Bells, who combined giant melodic jock jam hooks with intentionally in the red guitar riffs. These guys were doing the blown out speaker sound before it was cool. You hear rappers do it all the time now. But this was a pretty polarizing thing back in 2009. This was one of the first tracks they unleashed upon the unsuspecting public and my eardrums were not ready. Atlas Sound is Bradford Cox, aka the leader of Deer Hunter. That project didn't have an album out in 2009, sadly, but Atlas Sound was in full force. And on this song with Noah Lennox, aka Panda Bear from Animal Collective, they absolutely shine together. This song is so of its time, with two of the biggest names of the moment in this genre coming together. Apparently Noah taught Bradford the basics of sampling and beat matching when putting together this track. West Palm Beach band Surfer Blood were just getting started making low-key, laid-back surf jams for the seafaring set in 2009. They definitely had a distinct sound, and they still do, but my favorite song of theirs is when they turned the guitars way up and sounded a bit more like Weezer, and a little less like their surf rock brethren. This is like a louder version of Surf Wax America from the Blue Album, with vocals that sounded like they were recorded in a shower. While we're on the topic of the sunnier sounds of 2009, we have to talk about Bethany Cosentino and Best Coast. Her punchy, sincere California love songs were about to take over the conversation the following year, but before that happened, she dropped a few low-key demo tracks, including Something in the Way and this one, When I'm With You. The music is lazy and in love in the best kind of way. Brooklyn-based electro-indie dance-punk duo Matt and Kim had been turning heads for years, but their breakthrough was the album Grand in 2009, and specifically this song, which was used in a ton of stuff, like the video games NBA Live 10, The Sims 3 World Adventures, as well as uh, 90210, a Comcast commercial, a Mars Bars commercial, and my personal favorite, the pilot episode of Community. So excited I got to reference Community in another video. Yourself, 
I was gonna do another where are they now comment for this band, but actually it looks like they're still pretty active, so never mind. Needless to say, I haven't kept up, but man, this song was so much fun, as was a lot of Odd Blood. Good memories. Nobody was doing what Cold Cave was doing in 2009. Like, nobody. Taking the electro indie sound that was so trendy at the time and giving it a dark wave makeover? Genius. The group would really dive into this brooding goth pop aesthetic over the years, but with Love Comes Close, and especially this track, Life Magazine, they were channeling some serious New Order vibes in the early days, and I was in love with it. Meriwether Post Pavilion was the big one for the critics, but second place probably goes to Vecca de Mest, the breakout album from Grizzly Bear, featuring canonical gems like Cheerleader, While You Wait for the Others, and this standout, Two Weeks, which was the peak of their ambitious take on the folk pop of the era. This was a major highlight from the year, from a pivotal album and a singular band. <laughs> The world did not know it yet. Well, maybe they had some idea. But anyway, Passion Pit were about to blow up. That first album soundtracked so many of my best memories, house parties, and nights in the club. But Passion Pit's run all started with Sleepyhead. Originally a pretty crazy sounding, sample heavy demo from an EP that was a Valentine's Day gift for leader Michael Angelicos' girlfriend. Passion Pit sounded like a falsetto heavy hot chip, and I was here for it. I'll always have a soft spot in my heart for the subversive post-punk of Portland band The Thermals. They weren't always firing on all cylinders, and probably their peak album happened in 2006. But for me, Now We Can See is a gem. If only for the oweyawows of the title track, and the stomping beat, and their crazy fun live shows, and just everything. God, I'm so sad this band broke up. Time is a cruel mistress. Okay, there we go. Like I said, there's about a billion other awesome things that came out in 2009, and this is only talking about indie rock. Rap and pop were having pretty stellar years too, so dive in. In the meantime, you can check out my top 100 songs of 2009 on Spotify. That playlist is linked below. I made the list way back at the end of 2009, and I haven't changed it one bit since, so you know it's legit. Also, please do the whole YouTube thing and like the video and subscribe to the channel, follow me on social media, and be my friend. I'm Ben the Playlist Fiend, and thanks for watching, guys. We'll see you next time.